In this lecture, we are going to discuss in detail about the cytomegalovirus. So, let's get started. First of all, we will look at the structure of the cytomegalovirus. So, basically, cytomegalovirus is an enveloped virus. Okay. So, in the outside, you will see the presence of the envelope. Okay. Next, you will see the presence of the pigment protein. Okay. Now, here is the pigment. And beneath the tegument, you will see the presence of the capsid that is actually made up of protein. Here is the capsid and the shape of the capsid is icosahedral. Okay. And inside you will see the genomic material and the genomic material of the cytomegalovirus will be DNA, double-stranded DNA, double-stranded DNA. Okay, this is the basic structure of the cytomegalovirus. If we look at the transmission, how cytomegalovirus transmit from one person to another. So, we have categorized the transmission of the cytomegalovirus into three. First one, in the early life, you will see the cytomegalovirus can transmit through the placenta during the pregnancy. It can also be transmitted through the delivery time. Uh, when the baby passes through the birth canal, okay, and last you will see breast milk. So during the feeding, you can see the cytomegalovirus can also transmit from the mother to the baby. Okay. Second, you will see in the young age, you will see it can be transmitted through the saliva. So it means that cytomegalovirus is present in our saliva. Okay. In later life, you will see during the sexual contact. In that case, cytomegalovirus can transmit from one partner to another because the cytomegalovirus is present in both semen and the cervical secretion. It can also be transmitted through the blood transfusion. So, it is very much important to check cytomegalovirus before the transfusion of the blood. Okay, it can also be transmitted through the organ transplantation. So, it are basically the different transmission of the cytomegalovirus. If we look at the replication, how cytomegalovirus replicate in the cell. Before discussing the replication, you should have to know about the general uh, steps of the replication of the virus. So, first of all, the virus will make the early proteins after that you will see the replication of the genomic material and then virus will make the late protein early proteins are basically the enzymes that are actually helpful in the replications of the genomic material and late proteins are the structured protein like the capsid so it is the general uh, steps of the replications of the virus okay first of all if you see here this is the capsid of the cytomegalovirus inside the capsid you will see the presence of the dna okay and outside you will see here is the envelope first of all the virus will attach to the cell through the receptor okay after that you will see the entry of the virus inside the cell here is the capsid and here is the inside the capsid you will see the presence of the double stranded dna okay this is the double stranded dna okay after that the genomic material will enter into the nucleus now the double stranded dna convert into the circular shaped dna okay that is the important thing and during the entering of the virus, you will see the messenger RNA will also comes along with the virus. Here is the immediate early messenger RNA. Now, immediate early messenger RNA will form the immediate early, immediate early proteins. Okay. Now, this immediate early protein will activate the genome of the virus okay 
this immediately now after that you will see the formations of the early messenger rna okay now here is the early messenger rna and after that you will see the formations of the early proteins now this early protein is basically the enzyme like the dna polymerase okay this is the early protein that is actually dna polymerase now this dna polymerase will replicate the viral genome and after replication you will see the formation of the structure proteins okay again you will see the formations of the late messenger rna and from the late messenger rna you will see the late protein formation so in the replication of the cytomegalovirus there is an another step that is the immediate early protein first of all you will see the formation of the immediate early protein then you will see the productions of the early protein that act, these are basically the enzyme that will replicate the genome after that you will see the formation of the late messenger rna that will produce the late protein and these late proteins are basically the capsid okay now the capsid and the genomic material has been replicated now here is the different copies of the capsid and the replicated genome uh, will enter into this capsid another important thing about uh, replication of the genome the genomic material will replicate in concatenate form the different genomic material of the different virus will form together and after that you will see the cleavage of the genomic material with the enzyme that is terminase and after the cleavage of the genomic material one by one one genomic material will enter into the one capsid second genomic material will enter into the second capsid third genomic material will enter into this third capsid and ultimately you will see the uh, replications of the cytomegalovirus so this is how cytomegalovirus replicate inside the cell next we will see the latency in what type of cells cytomegalovirus will show its latency so most important you will see it show its latency in the monocytes it can also be become latent in the kidney or you can say cervical cells so they are basically the most important thing which you have to remember about the latency of the cmv next you will see the immune evn how cytomegalovirus protect itself from the immune system of our body first one you will see the major histocompatibility complex one and the viral peptide instability so major histocompatibility complex are basically the receptor that shows the viral peptide on the surface of the cell if i say here is the major histocompatibility complex one this will show the viral peptide on the cell surface and this viral peptide will be detected by the cytotoxic t cells and these cytotoxic t cells will destroy the whole cell but ultimately cytomegalovirus will make the weak bond with the mhc and ultimately there will be the no presentations of the viral peptide on the cell surface and ultimately the cmv can survive inside the cell next you will see the formations of the micro rna micro rna basically prevent the synthesis of the major histocompatibility complex mhc when there is no mhc there will be no presentation of the cell and ultimately this infected cell can survive in our body and last you will see the cytokine receptor cytokine receptor so basically cytokines are the signal for the activations of our immune system this infected cell will produce lot of cytokine receptor now these cytokine receptor will bind to these cytokines and ultimately there will be the no free cytokine available when there is no free cytokine available then you will see there will be the no activations of our immune system in that case okay next if we look at the clinical findings so most important disease caused by the cmv will be the cytomegalic influent disease most importantly it caused the congenital abnormalities specifically in the first trimester in the pregnancy because in the first trimester you will see the 
synthesis of the different organs okay so in the cid cytomegalic inclusion disease you will see the microcephaly that is actually the congenital abnormalities you can see the seizures deafness jaundice and the purpura purpura is actually caused by the due to the low platelets count thrombocytopenia and in that case it can also be called the blueberry muffins okay you can also see the hepatosplenomegaly in the infants and mental retardation and most importantly so basically the new net will secrete the cytomegalovirus in his or her urine that is the important diagnostic criteria okay so here are basically the different finding of the cytomegalic inclusion disease okay and next is the heterophil negative mononucleosis mononucleosis is basically caused by the abstain bar virus but similar symptoms that is related to the mononucleosis can be seen in the cytomegalovirus infection but in the mononucleosis caused by the abstain bar virus you will see the productions of the heterophil antibodies but in that case there will be the no heterophil antibodies so that is the most important thing heterophil antibodies these are basically antibodies not specific to the cytomegalovirus okay and in that case you will never see the formations of the heterophil antibodies so that's why we called it heterophil negative means there will be no productions of the heterophil antibodies infection caused by the cytomegalovirus okay but in that case the symptoms will be similar to the mononucleosis so in that case you will see the fever lethargy abnormal lymphocytes or you can also see the sore throat or lymphadenopathy okay so here are basically the diff symptoms that is related to the mononucleosis okay and this is mostly seen in the immunocompetent patient but i mean in immunocompromised patient you will see the systemic infection like pneumonitis pneumonia esophagitis and the hepatitis and in aids patient you will see the two most important thing colitis along with that you will see the diarrhea and retinitis these are the most important symptoms seen in the aids patient okay if we look at the lab diagnosis so most important you will see the pcr so in the pcr you can uh, check the dna or the messenger rna of the cytomegalovirus in the sample like the spinal fluid you can also check in, in the saliva so as we see that the cytomegalovirus is present in the saliva of the infected patient so you can uh, go towards the pcr of the saliva in that case and it can also be seen in the amniotic fluid as well okay next is the culture you can go towards the culture of the virus and this culture is mostly done in the shell wire in that case first of all you will culture the virus and after that you will detect the virus through the fluorescence antibodies and it will take approximately 72 hours for this culturing process 72 hours next is the biopsy you can take the biopsy of the tissue okay and in that case or you can also use the urine as well so in that case you will see the multinucleated giant cell first of all you will see the giant cell okay inside the uh, giant cell you will see the multi nucleus okay and inside the nucleus you will see the influence bodies and these influence body will look like owl's eye these are basically the influence body and these influence bodies will look like owl's eye and you can detect the influence body through the staining process or through the fluorescence antibodies so these are basically the most important thing first of all you will see the giant cell inside the giant cell you can see the multinucleus and inside the nucleus you will see the influence body so this is the diagnostic criteria of the cytomegalovirus next is is the serology and so in this serology you will go toward the antibodies like the igm okay and pp65 that is most important pp65 is a protein that is present in the capsid of the cytomegalovirus so pp65 is actually present in the blood lymphocytes so inside the lymphocyte 
you will see the presence of the virus pp and this virus having pp65 protein now we can detect the pp65 proteins through the fluorescence antibodies okay we will use the antibodies and these antibodies will be fluorescence labeled okay so ultimately these antibodies will specifically bind to the pp65 proteins otherwise you will never see if there is no pp65 then there will be the no binding of the antibodies to the pp65 proteins that is the viral capsid proteins so here are basically the different diagnosis of the cytomegalovirus and last in the treatment you can use the antiviral drug like gangsiclovir well gangsiclovir for scarnet pseudopovir so but important thing which you have to remember these antiviral drugs can vary according to the location and according to the patient and these antiviral drugs will be decided by your local physician so this is all about the cytomegalovirus if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much